I don't have a pizza today, but I've got a couple of snacks with me because I always get a bit peckish around this time. What about you? Obviously, if you were here, I'd share them with you. But you're not, so you know, more for me. Hang on. Paul, do you want a hula hoop? Thank you. Anyway, let me ask you a question. Just imagine for a second that you have a packed lunch for school or work as normal. And you come into school or work one day and your best friend or colleague hasn't got any lunch with them. They have nothing. What thoughts would go through your mind? What would you do? Would you keep it for yourself? You know, secretly eat it under the table or something so they don't see? Or maybe you would share it. One to think on. Now this reminds me of a little boy in the Bible who had brought his lunch with him to a gathering one day. But it seemed no one else had. There were a lot of people and he was the only one who had thought to bring something. And by the way, when I say a lot of people, I mean thousands. Let me tell you the story. Jesus had become a bit of a celebrity in Galilee and many people had begun following him, actually following him around. And this was one of those occasions. Jesus had climbed a hill and sat down with his friends. A large crowd had already gathered and I imagine there were more arriving. It was from here that Jesus spoke to the people and taught them about God. The little boy we mentioned earlier was among the people who'd come to hear Jesus speak. Anyway, time had gone on and the afternoon began to drift into evening. And I think Jesus must have heard a few grumbling stomachs from the crowd because he turned to his friend Philip and said, Philip, where can we buy enough bread for all these people to eat? Can you picture Philip's face at this moment? He probably looked at the crowd and then back at Jesus. I bet it was a bit of a double take moment. Massive crowd, Jesus. Massive crowd, Jesus. The Bible says there were around 5,000 men in the crowd and that's without counting all the women and children who were there as well. So Philip's calm response to Jesus' question was, someone would have to work almost a year to buy enough food for each person to have only a little piece. I just love how reserved and polite Philip's response is. I probably would have laughed hysterically and told Jesus he was crazy if it was me. Where can we buy bread for them all? Indeed, my goodness. But as we know, Jesus already had a plan. He knew exactly what was about to happen and what he was going to do. However, before we find out, let's see where the little boy has got to. I'd like to think he sat up on the grass somewhere in a nice little spot with his picnic rug out and his packed lunch of five barley loaves and two fish plated up in front of him, ready for his little feast. When along comes Andrew, another of Jesus's friends. Now, since Jesus mentioned about buying bread for all the people, Andrew has frantically been searching the crowd for anyone who might have some food with them. When suddenly he spots the little boy from a distance and picks his way through the crowd to get to him. I can almost 
picture the scene. The little lad has just made up a lovely sarnie and is about to take a large bite when Andrew shouts, STOP! But that scene isn't in the Bible. But what it does say is, Another one of his followers, Andrew, Simon Peter's brother, said to Jesus, here is a boy with five loaves of barley bread and two little fish. But that is not enough for so many people. So our assumption is that the little boy was more than happy to offer up his packed lunch. But I quite like the idea that it took a little persuasion after Andrew told him, we're going to share your five loaves and two fish with this whole crowd. Imagine the look on his face. However it went, the little boy did give what he had to Jesus. What he had wasn't much at all in the great scheme of things, but he decided to share it, to give it to Jesus. Five barley loaves and two small fish. And Jesus, knowing all along what was going, what he was going to do, gave thanks to God for those loaves of bread and the fish and then performed a phenomenal miracle, giving the bread and fish to the people in the crowd. Jesus and his friends handed out food until everyone had had enough. Jesus took something that was small and multiplied it into much, much more. So much more that there were 12 baskets of food left over once everyone had gone home. Sometimes it can feel like we don't have a lot to offer. That could be stuff like food to give away or money. It might be our time, skills or resources. But with God, it's important to remember that whatever we bring, however measly it might feel, he can multiply it and do big things with it that we cannot even think of. Let's just go back to that question at the start about sharing your packed lunch with your friend at school if they didn't have anything to eat. Would you? It might seem to be a small act of kindness to share your lunch with your friend, but it could make a massive difference. When we give what we have to God, no matter how small we think it is, God can do more with it than we can ever imagine. I just want to take 60 seconds to give a thought for those people that like to think through things a little bit more deeply. Here's a question for you. When do you think the miracle actually happened? Because if you read the same story in Matthew's Gospel, here's what happens. They give Jesus five loaves and two fish, and Jesus blesses them and breaks them and gives them back to the disciples to start feeding the crowds. He gives back five loaves and two fish. And as they start feeding the crowd, the miracle happens. And what I want us to think about is that I think sometimes we sit waiting for God saying, hey God, give me 12 baskets full and I'll start doing what you've told me. Hey God, answer all the questions I've got and I'll start doing what I know you want me to do next. Are we waiting for God to give us the whole picture. Are we waiting for God to tell us the end before we make the step at the beginning? The miracle happened when they started feeding the crowd with five loaves and with two fish. We're going to pray together. We're going to pray and as we do, I'm going to ask you to put your hand first on your heart and we're going to pray about our will and then we're going to put our hand on our head 
and we're going to pray about our faith. So would you put your hand on your heart with me and let's pray. Lord, please would you help us to be people who are generous, like the boy in the story. Would you help us to be willing to share what we have and willing to place it in your hands and let you use it. And now put your hand on your head. Lord, please help us to remember and to believe that you are a miraculous God. And when we put our little in your hands, help us to have the faith to know that you can make it into a lot. Amen.